Hi, Chuck Matasic at Cotabo Crossbows. We're going to talk crossbow scopes and how to make a selection and get the best shooting results possible with some of the equipment that's out there today. This is a Cotabo. We'll come back to it later, but let's get into the scopes and see what's going on. First, there's a couple different crossbow scopes you can um, choose. Most of the crossbow scopes you're going to pick are going to be fixed power scopes. That means they're going to be three times magnification or four times magnification or five times magnification. And uh, they may have illumination feature on them or not. This has a little dial with five rheostat settings for green or red. So that's a, a added benefit. Is it necessary? No. Is it helpful in some situations? Yes. So we're talking a fixed power scope most of the time. Now with a fixed power scope, personal preference, I'm going to suggest uh, three, you know, a three power scope is excellent for close in stuff. So if you're turkey hunting uh, and you want to bring that crossbow up with minimal movement, find the turkey and take the shot, three power scope is great. You get up to five and six power scopes or more, it's, you're looking at a lot of brush and maybe trying to find that turkey in a uh, uh, smaller game, it gets a little more difficult. So anyway, I like a three power scope. Every scope is going to say something on it. This scope says one half minute of angle per click. when you go to start adjusting your scope is what does this say under the turret one half minute of angle and we're going to explain that so you know what that means. Uh, there's only one adjustment on a, a fixed power scope typically it's your diopter adjustment in the rear and, and this just sharpens the image. So now a lot of times when you get a scope this is screwed all the way down you don't even know it exists but if you open it up you can sharpen that image, get your reticles very crystal clear, and you can um, get the image in the scope the way you want it. Now, fixed power scopes are the way to go, uh, I think, in crossbows, fewer moving parts. You can put a variable scope. This is a four and a half to 14 power variable scope. But what I want you to recognize in variable scopes are a couple things. One is that as you change magnification, in typically it's going to be a um, second focal plane scope, those are most common. As you change magnification, the crosshairs always stay the same, just like on a rifle, you have to set your magnification, sight in at that position, and leave it there. Because if you go from 9x to 3x back and forth, your reticles are going up and down, and in a, cross, uh, in a crossbow, that's not acceptable. If you've sighted in at, uh, at uh, 3x or 12x, and then you go down to 3x, you can see what happens in this photo. Again, understand a second focal plane scope uh, is common, but realize that you, when you sight it in, you're going to uh, set it at one setting and leave it there. Now the scope manufacturers have been very imaginative. What they've done is they've gone ahead and take a variable power scope, one and a half to five X scope, this particular one, and then they gave you a little speed dial reading here so that you can adjust the, the, the magnification for the speed of your bow. So even though it's a variable scope and I can set it at three power or maybe all the way up to five power, I'm going to find where uh, I'm going to match up this magnification with kind of the speed of my bow so those reticles work out maybe at 20, 30, 40, 50 yards. So again, uh, a speed adjusted scope very often is just simply a second focal plane scope where they've indexed some, some uh, arrow speeds over to magnification. So it's a one and a half to five X scope. You're never going to use it over that range. You're going to pick one setting, lock down the nut, and you're, uh, you're off and running. Now a few things on minute of angle, very somewhat complicated for some folks. It's a given rule, has nothing to do with the scope, just one of those things that works out. It's kind of the arc and part of a part of an arc. 
So if your scope says a half a minute of angle is one click, that means at 100 yards, you're moving your point of impact a half inch for every click you move. Half inch for every click you move. So if you wanted to move your scope two inches at 100 yards, and you have a half a minute of angle scope, you'd move it four clicks. One, two, three, four. But obviously, as you get closer and to distances, and you wanted to move two inches uh, at 50 yards, it would, might take eight clicks. You get even closer uh, at uh, 25 yards, 16 clicks. So again, as you, uh, you can calculate your half minute, uh, your, your minute of angle and that impact, most of the scopes you're going to see on crossbows, half minute of angle, maybe a quarter minute of angle. And so at a quarter minute of angle would be, would be one quarter of an inch uh, for every click at 100 yards. So do some math, look at this chart, study it, understand how it works, and realize that to move two inches at 20 yards, you're going to be putting about 20 clicks on the scope. And on that turret, to move it up two inches at 20 yards, it's going to be about a half full turn to get a full 20 clicks on the scope. A couple other quick ideas for you. Uh, scope caps, we, you know, there's flip-up types. I tend to keep them on my scope when I'm not using it when I'm hunting. I take them off, and another popular feature, the kind with the elastic on it, uh, either work fine. Um, again, take care of your lenses on scopes. Use a good scope cloth. Uh, rings, you want to mount your scope properly. A few words on mounting your scope. These are the rings we use. I'll give you a close-up of them. Um, they have a cross piece which fits into kind of the weaver rail assembly on the bow. So one thing we do when we mount a scope is we take these rings and we position them so they line up with the scope and we press them in center to center so that we have that metal crossbar riding against metal here and the metal crossbar riding against metal there and that way there's no movement in the scope back and forth due to recoil. When you're uh, our, our procedure for sighting in a scope is to is mount the scope rings, mount, put the scope in the scope rings, but don't tighten down the scope rings totally. Leave the scope uh, in the rings so it has a little movement and you can turn it a little left and right. And what we do is we take a plumb bob out about 20 yards and uh, make sure we use a level to get the bow perfectly level and we turn that scope in the rings so that vertical crosshair is exactly on our plumb line out at 20 yards. Then we tighten down our scope rings, and then we know that ballistic reticle that we're shooting up and down 20, 30, 40 yards is perfectly perpendicular to the bow, and that greatly enhances accuracy. So we've covered a couple things there. Uh, we've talked about second focal plane scopes. Now, what's popular with a lot of rifle hunters now uh, is they hate that fact that that image changes but their crosshairs don't and they hate the fact that they have to sight in maybe at 14x and uh, then leave their scope there because they know their ballistic reticle becomes useless when they start changing uh, magnification. So that's a second focal plane scope. A first focal plane scope, normally more expensive, uh, the reticle and the image move together. So that means you could really use your ballistic reticle uh, at different magnifications because as you go down to 4.5x the proportion of the reticle stays constant. When you go up to 12x in a first focal plane scope, again, it stays constant. A couple uh, concepts on, if you notice, this scope is a little fatter, and this scope is a little skinnier. Well, this is a one-inch tube, very common in the United States. Again, most of your uh, rifle scopes, crossbow scopes, are going to be one-inch tubes. You would use one-inch rings with one-inch tubes. If, however, you have a European scope or a special scope with a larger diameter uh, chassis, this is a 30 millimeter scope. So again, you would use 30 millimeter rings, very popular in Europe, lets a little more light uh, transmit through the scope. So that's the story on 30 millimeter uh, 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 scope rings and scope, body, scope bodies. Uh, a couple um, uh, quick notes on other things you can do and some of the things you'll see target shooters doing. I'm going to bring this Kotobo back up here 
and set it on the table. Uh, and you can see this has an accessory on it called an HHA optimizer. And basically what we've done is we've taken our scope, we've put this sighting device in between the scope rail that comes with the bow and, um, and the scope. So we in, in fact have really two, two scope rails on here. So what we're trying to achieve here is we have a dial adjustment that basically as I will loosen it to make it adjustable and move it, I can change how my scope is angled. So basically as I angle my scope down for increased yardage, it causes me to raise the bow. So for example, I'm going to step up here and uh, as you increase yardage, you're angling your scope up and down. So then uh, again, we start maybe at, at zero yards. If I'm shooting out at 70, 80 yards, I'm going to adjust it on this dial, which will be my reference point. I angle the scope down, I put the scope in the target, it causes me to raise the bow. So again, uh, uh, this is a neat feature. Moving parts, we're not fans of moving parts, but uh, this has been proven to be very uh, successful on target circles. From a hunting perspective, realize it's one more thing you gotta do. It's one more thing you gotta worry about. Game's in sight, what's the game's yardage, and I've gotta adjust it to that particular uh, distance. So those are a few things on, um, on uh, uh, rifle scopes, crossbow scopes in general. I uh, hope it's helpful to you. Um, and um, accuracy, what it's all about. So take your time sighting in, understand uh, your, your adjustments and how your scope's set up. And uh, if you have any questions, certainly it's the answer's probably in the literature that came with the scope. Take care from Cote Bow Crossbows. Thank you for your time. At Cote Bow, our objective is to make a great bow that you can depend on time after time, shot after shot. So when that moment of truth comes, you're ready to go. You go to fire. Make it happen.